for some internal parts. We have a pretty simple machine. There's not much to it. Um, and when we change these wires, the spool, there's only one right way to do it. And a lot of kids end up forgetting a lot of these details. So when we go to replace this, we have this little collar or clip on the end. That's how we secure the, the spool. But if you notice, our drive roller assembly is pointed up and the wires coming off of the top and pointed down. A lot of kids will get this flipped and they'll have the wire coming from the bottom and then up into the drive roller assembly. And that causes a lot more friction and tension than need be. And it can cause a bird's nest. Now a bird's nest is when you're welding and you either plug the contact tip and you keep holding the trigger and this doesn't know that you've plugged the tip of it and it keeps trying to feed it, trying to feed it, and then eventually it shoves the wire out the side here. Uh, another way we can cause contact tips is when we are welding and you have your gun lead. If it's wrapped up tight while you're welding, it can cause a bird's nest in the machine because it's trying to force that wire through a bunch of tight, tightly wound gun leads. So when you're welding, always unravel the whole machine before you get welding. Don't get lazy and just do one or two coils. These are 12 foot guns. You need to unravel the whole thing and have it just kind of stretched out of the booth so you don't get a bird's nest. All right, now on this uh, post here, we have this little knob. Uh, we're gonna call this the tension knob, all right? This has got enough tension in it to hold this spool back enough that it's not gonna just sit and unravel itself, but only if you line up that tension post with the spool's hole that's designed for that to go in it. Um, whether it's a wooden spool, plastic, metal, something, most of them will have a spot for that tension knob. Just gotta make sure that you line that up. And that'll keep tension on this so that we don't end up unspooling the whole thing. Now, if you're putting a new spool on this, one of the more, you just get in a hurry and you don't think about it, it's tied off to the end of this and usually kids will just undo it and they'll clip the little bent hooked part and then let go or it slips out of their hand and then like 40 feet of wire <laughs> unspools and yeah, it's upsetting. So our drive roller assembly, we have our tension knob here. This is what sets the tension on or pressure against the drive rollers pinching on our wire. These are really simple, but they're made out of aluminum. And if we over tighten this tension knob, which looks like this one's too tight, we can end up breaking some of these parts because it's just cast aluminum, it's pretty fragile. To change our drive rollers, you've got to hold this one still, keep it from moving, and we just twist this piece here, and then the drive roller is gonna slide off, okay? Now, if you notice, it's got the, the size wire and whether or not it's like a U-grooved or V-grooved channel for it. When we're replacing these, whether it's for a knurled one or just a regular V-groove, the size we're using, this is 035 wire, that needs to be facing us when we put the drive rollers back on. On this side, it's 030. If we were running 030 wire, this would need to be on the outside when we go to put it back on. Now, this bottom one, because it's the, the gear-driven one, you don't have to hold it tight when you go to change it. And these, this is where we put our drive rollers when we're switched in and out from knurled and V-grooved. Uh, we run knurled for our flex corded stuff. Uh, that helps prevent crushing the corded wire. Uh, if you want to think of the corded wire, flex cord stuff, it's like pixie sticks. Um, the outside is the, the steel filler and the inside is the flux compound. It it's, uh, acts as an additional shielding agent. And if you have this too tight, you can crush that metal liner on the outside of it and it'll cause bird's nest over and over and over again. So you don't wanna over tighten those when you're switching them in and out. Now, when we are welding our flux cord wire, just depends on the AWS classification of it. Uh, some wires require to be ran switched or reverse polarity, 
and some can be ran as just straight polarity standard. Um, to change polarity on this machine, it's really simple. You just switch uh, which terminal or post that they're hooked to. Just like your car battery, it's just it's two wires. One way will be reverse polarity and the other way will be straight. And what that does or changes um, is the current will either flow through the gun or the ground. We'll get into that when we talk about stick welding. It's a little bit easier to understand. So that is the internal parts and pieces. Sometimes this guide here uh, can be put in too far and it can be pinched by these drive rollers or depending on your drive roller, it may chew up this guy. Um, these come with a new drive roller just in case we have to replace them. Um, but that is the internal parts of our MIG welder. They're pretty simple. As far as the tension goes for our solid wire, maybe around two and a half, three is where we would need to be. You could go all the way to four, just depends on what you're doing. On our flex cord, we're gonna be up closer to like two and a half or two. That's it as far as replacement parts. Um, the other thing, just while I'm remembering it, so the gun is shoved in this spot here. I'll show you. And one of the more common things that can happen, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on the camera, is because kids are lazy and they, instead of pulling on the actual handle of the machine, they drag it around by the MIG gun. Well, what that can do is it can pull this gun out of this housing just a little bit to where it plugs these little tiny holes that the shielding gas flows through. You'll end up welding and you'll notice a whole bunch of porosity and pinholes in your weld and you're like, what the crap, I've got good gas, good gas pressure. Uh, it's not empty, my tip's clean, all that stuff, and you're thinking, what's going on? This machine is broken. No, just someone in a period before you was dragging this thing around by the gun lead instead of the handles. So you'll just lift the hood of this and double check that. Just make sure that when you put it back in, that it's all the way pushed against the housing, and then you wanna tighten this down. Now, when you are working on any of the internal parts of this to prevent electric shock, we're gonna make sure that this machine is turned off. Now, you can unplug it to be extra sure, but the, the machine needs to be plugged in when we feed new wire through the gun. Now, when we're feeding new wire into the gun, you need to make sure that the contact tip is removed from the diffuser. That's when we're feeding a new spool of wire in. Uh, the reason for that is if you don't, this tiny 35 thousandths thick wire is trying to hit the same size hole and make it out without getting jammed up. And most of the time it doesn't work that way. So if you leave it on, you can cause a bird's nest right out of the gate. So we remove the contact tip when we are replacing the wire. Now also to prevent waste, we're gonna turn the gas off when we are feeding the new wire out. Some machines will sense that there's no current or no weld going on and it'll turn the gas off for you, but not ours. Remove the contact tip when we're feeding new wire through and shut the gas off so that we don't ever cause a bird's nest. Now back to electric shock. Unless you are welding in a puddle with damp clothes or licking some bare wires, it's really pretty tough to be shocked while you're MIG welding. Uh, just make sure you're welding in dry clothes using 100% cotton, leather boots, your leather gloves, all of that. If you're doing all of those things, chances are you're not gonna get electrocuted. Uh, when you're feeding new wire in, uh, you can have this ho hood open. Just make sure nobody's putting their hands or or anything in here so that we don't cause any shock. This runs on 220 or 240 volt and it's ran through a 55 amp breaker which is more than enough to ruin your day. And that's enough power that if you're lucky, it'll just maybe blow out part of your hand or arm if you were to grab hold of the prongs. Uh, if you're unlucky, dead. Like all the way dead. In order to complete the circuit on this, just like your car battery, your ground needs to be hooked to either the work table or whatever you are welding on. Otherwise, you're not gonna complete the circuit. We'll talk more about that when I go through the demo on your first welding assignment and 
it'll make a little bit more sense there. This is just the internal parts of everything. Uh, and remember, if you lose uh, some of your notes or you have no idea what, you know, you forget, check the Dum Dum card. Okay, check those pictures. It's a good way to start before just jumping right into money. I don't know something wrong. Okay, use some critical thinking and check the Dum Dum cards. All right, that's it.